Lava, a large multimodal model that we previously covered on the channel, just released version 1.6. Now compared to version 1.5, this version has several improvements. So it can handle images of a greater resolution. It also says it has better visual reasoning and OCR capability, and then it can handle more conversational scenarios. And of course, it's already available on Alama if you wanna try it out locally. If you're gonna use Alama, make sure you download it and then, and then launch it. If you're using it on the Mac, it will automatically start it, but otherwise you'll need to call Alama Serve. Now, I'm just gonna run Alama list so we can see what models I've got on my machine. And you can see here, I've got the Lava version 1.5 in second place and then Lava version 1.6 is just below it. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try it out with some images that I've previously tried on 1.5 and see whether it does better with 1.6. We're gonna try and do a mixture of images. So we'll start with this one here, which is a picture of me looking at a magnifying glass that I was uh, trying to use for a YouTube cover. So we're gonna run a llama run and we'll pass in the 1.5 name and we'll ask it, can you describe this image? And you can see it comes back, it, it does a pretty good job. This is a bold man wearing glasses holding an old magnifying glass. What we can then do is we can actually just switch over to the 1.6 model using the load command, which I think they added in a, in a reasonably recent release. We'll switch over to 1.6 and let's ask it the same question. As it comes back, a similar sort of answer, a little bit more detail. We're now gonna exit from here and we're gonna run the rest of the, the examples through IPython. So we're gonna import the Alama Python library. Uh, if you wanna learn more about that, check this video out up here. And we're gonna also import our display image function and we're gonna be using the rich console to print things out. We're then going to create a function called generate. And what that function's gonna do is it's gonna call the Alama generate function, we'll pass in the model, prompt the image and we're gonna tell it to stream the response and then we'll iterate over the stream and print it out to the screen. And we're gonna start with this image here of an arrow on some bricks. And we're gonna do a slightly different prompt this time. So we're gonna ask it, can you create a caption for this image? We'll then iterate over our two models. Remember 1.5 and 1.6. We'll print out the name of the model and then we'll, uh, we'll call that generate function and we'll see what it comes back with. So let's run that and you can see 1.5 says 3D blue and white arrow on a brick wall and 1.6 says a blue brick wall with a white arrow pointing to the left suggesting guidance or direction. So neither of those are really like that creative. Um, so sometimes I found that 1.6 was coming up with like quite like quite pithy uh, type quotes. So let's just tweak our prompt. We'll say, can you make it a creative caption instead? And so this is what 1.5 comes up with. And then I think 1.5, 1.6 is one is probably a little bit more creative. Let's try another image. There's something I found that 1.5 kind of struggled with was pulling text out of an image. So I'm gonna use this uh, bat image that I had for a blog post that I wrote about six months ago. Let's see what, what, how much text it can pull out. So we're gonna ask it what text is written on this image. Uh, let's run that. So 1.5 says running a large language model locally on my laptop. So that is what's on the bottom. Uh, 1.6 says, Hugging face running a large language model locally on my laptop. So that's pretty good. So that's actually got a bit more. Uh, sometimes it can also get that learn data with mark bit on the bottom. So let's give it another try. This time 1.5 is weird. I don't even know why it's printing the zero. Something's obviously gone a bit wrong there and 1.6 more or less does the same thing again. So it hasn't quite got all the text. For comparison, if I put it into chat GPT, this is what it comes up with. So it's not exactly perfect, but it has actually picked out all the text from that image. Let's try another one. So what something, something that I see quite often is images on LinkedIn that have code in there. And sometimes I just wish I'm, I wanna get that code so I can try it out myself. So this is one here uh, showing how to do some window, uh, window functions in Python. We'll ask the, the models, can you extract the code from this image? So 1.5, I, I don't think it really has any idea what this is. So it sort of identifies, yeah, this is kind of pandas maybe, and it sort of prints out some stuff, but it's, it's totally wrong. 1.6 seems to be a little bit better. It kind of identifies, okay, there's some statistics, but this is not the code that's on that, that, that image. And it then prints out a whole load of stuff that is completely uh, irrelevant. For comparison, this is what chat GPT does. So this is, I'm pretty sure this is all, all, almost perfect. Although I did have to kind of play around with it a few times and it was, it was getting it completely wrong uh, as well or saying it didn't know what it was uh, several times until I did get an answer. Let's now try one more. So this one's another one that I found that 1.5 found quite tricky, which is a, like a diagram which has a very specific meaning. So this is from, I think this is from a Neo4j uh, article. So it's sort of showing the difference in how you model data in a relational database versus a graph database. So let's see whether the two models can describe this image. So you can see that it, it's kind of generically saying, hey, there's a, there's a diagram of relationships between, between objects, but it doesn't, 1.5 doesn't really know uh, what it is. How about 1.6? So it's slightly better, so it's identified, okay, it's a database or a data structure and it sort of pulls out, okay, there's relationships. 
uh, and they're pointing to nodes. So it's kind of figured out this is probably a graph structure, but it's not able to succinctly say what's the difference between the two. And so just so you can see what ChatGPT uh, comes back with, so it goes, okay, yeah, this is a transition from a tabular data representation to a graph model, and it kind of pulls out pretty much perfectly what this diagram, this image is all about. Uh, so obviously that's not a, an exactly fair comparison because we're comparing a, a multi, like a, just a model against like a whole product. Uh, but I think it's interesting just to see what the difference is at the moment. If you want to learn more about the Alama Python library that we used in this video, check out this other video up here uh, where we went through it in more detail.